just been thinking about books and more specifically about mentioning books in YouTube videos. I mean this came to mind because I was in a, I made a video to uh, Pyro yesterday and I mentioned a book in it and I don't very often do that actually in these videos. Occasionally I do but not often. But uh, I got to thinking afterwards why did I do that exactly? And that got me thinking about the different ways in which that kind of reference might be used and what purpose it's, it's, it's serving or what purpose it's served for me in the past at least. And I think there's kind of three, for me at least, there's three broad uh, functions that it serves, some of which are reputable and some of which are not, I don't think. I mean, certainly there is a way of using books, and I've done this myself in the past, in which you refer to something, you cite a body of knowledge as a way of asserting authority and power. And as I say, I, when I was, particularly when I was a young academic, not young in, in age, but you know, I had, when I hadn't been in academia very long, you know, and I was still pretty insecure about what the function of an academic was and how important it was to know stuff and all those kind of things. Uh, when, you know, if I did feel intimidated by a student, and you know, you didn't, I don't, you're probably not supposed to say this, but I'm like, you know, as an academic, you do sometimes feel intimidated by students by students who are smart, particularly if you're feeling insecure or you're not 100% sure of your own um, knowledge or you just, yeah, just personal reasons, I guess. And, uh, and certainly when I first started in academia, sometimes I would absolutely do that. You know, you would kind of assert your authority, your intellectual and, uh, and academic authority by kind of blinding the student with book titles. You know, have you read this? Have you thought about this set of ideas? Have you, uh, you do you understand Derrida? Have you read all of Bart's works? Have you looked at Foucault? You know, this is the kind of shit I would come out with. I think it's already guilty about it now. It was years ago. And I, and I don't suppose I fooled any of the students I tried those bullying tactics on for one minute, really. Because it, it is just kind of intellectual bullying. You are just trying to... Um, battered the person into, into intellectual submission by, as I say, throwing book titles at them. Uh, so that's certainly certainly one use of referencing. And, 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 and in a more broad sense, just related to that, you know, just a kind of assertion of authority. You must believe what I say because I've read more than you. I mean, that's certainly something that I've used myself at times, not recently, but I can definitely feel the desire sometimes. Uh, and, I've, and, I've, and I've seen it happen many times. But the, uh, the other two, I think, uses for references, particularly of books, but perhaps for other things as well, are slightly more legitimate. I mean, one is obviously, you know, when you are talking about specific knowledge, um, and specific empirical knowledge particularly. You know, if, you, if you're arguing with a creationist, it does kind of make sense to say, look at, you know, read Dawkins on this subject. Because if you do read Dawkins, you'll find that he is citing um, some actual empirical work by paleontologists, by evolutionary biologists, by anthropologists, by uh, anatomical uh, scientists, you know, people who study the biology of the body. And, uh, and, there, and within that, there is empirical information, actual objective data about the way the world works that, that will support you know, what you're trying to argue for ultimately. So what you're trying to do when you make that kind of a citation is, uh, is you know, link yourself to knowledge which is grounded in the scientific method or at least in the very best methods of evidence gathering that there are. That's completely different to quoting the biblical source, of course. Uh, actually, that's something I found that some people don't understand, you know, when I've, um, when I've, when I've witnessed theological discussions, or discussions between naive theologians and uh, atheists. You know, quite often the assumption is, you quote your book, I'll quote mine, and it's the same thing, and it isn't the same thing at all. You know, scientific inquiry, quoting scientific studies, is, you know, the purpose of that is because the chain of authority links back to the empirical method. Uh, quoting the Bible doesn't, doesn't do that. It doesn't link back to the empirical method. It links back to something else, which many of us would not consider legitimate as a source of that kind of knowledge. Uh, 
Okay, but anyway, that's the second uh, reason for quoting a book, I think, which is valid, is that, you know, you're actually trying to locate a fact on which to hang your opinions, and which to hang your statements and propositions, and that's fine. Uh, the third method, which I think is possibly related to the thing I just said about the Bible, actually, which is to do with common frames of reference and common language and common um, stories and narratives and quotations. And this doesn't have to be a, a science to, science book at all. You know, a lot of the uh, videos I watched on YouTube, for example, make passing references to films like The Matrix. You know, someone's, I watched a Laura Layla uh, video this morning and she talked about Down the Rabbit Hole. Now, of course, I know Down the Rabbit Hole comes from Alice in Wonderland. But really, when you hear Down the Rabbit Hole, particularly on YouTube, you are listening to Alice in Wonderland through the, the Matrix. You know what I mean? So you, you, you're uh, locating your conversation, you're referring to your conversation, you're sharing some knowledge with the, the listener about a set of books, films, ideas that they immediately get. You know what I mean? It's a shared frame of reference, not scientific. Um, it, it's just a common kind of lingua franca, you know, and that person could respond using like a splinter in the mind quite easily, or could start talking about Mad Hatter's tea parties, and they get it because they're in the same frame of reference. Uh, and as I say, I think the Bible does that for some folk. You know what I mean? If you, I think if you're if you're steeped in in biblical studies, and it's quite uh, easy to talk to other people who are similarly steeped. You can make those references. And again, I guess that's kind of legitimate. Obviously, I don't have the same relationship to the Bible. It's a piece of literature, as far as I'm concerned. But, um, you know, as, as I say, if you are talking to someone, there's no reason why that wouldn't be a source of, of mutual uh, quotation and, uh, and shared stories in the same way that The Matrix or Alice in Wonderland is or whatever. Yeah, so those are some reasons why quoting books is good and why quoting books is not good. Throwing a book at someone's head and saying, if you haven't read this, we can't talk, or if you haven't read this, th it means you're stupid and I'm not, is bad, and I've done that and I fess up now. I'm much more of an ignorant teacher now. Enthusiastic ignorance is the approach I try to bring now. Um, but other to other, the other types are valid. As long as you understand that they're different. Citing a text because it links you back to some empirical evidence is not the same as citing a text because it's, uh, it, it's a, it provides a common set of ideas that you can talk with the other person.